Well, it's good to be in the, the house of the Lord on another Thursday. I was thinking it's been a, a long week, maybe longer for some of us, but it's been a, it seems like it's been a, a long time since we've been in church, but I'm thankful that we all made it back out, that the Lord made a way for us to make it back on a Thursday. You know, there's some people that didn't make it through the Monday through Thursday. They didn't wake up even on a Monday, um, but the Lord provided a way for us to be here again on another Thursday night. So I appreciate that. I don't ever want to take that for granted that the Lord allows me to walk through these doors just one more time. Uh, it's my choice to walk through these doors, but he allows me to get to make that choice. He allows me to, to wake up just a little bit more every single morning, to, to go to sleep another night. But there's so many, there's so many people out in the world that, that don't make that, that don't make that. They don't wake up the next morning or they, they die in a car accident. They die of something and they don't get to see that next day. But I'm thankful that the Lord let us get to see that next day. Another chance to get to live for him and get to prove our love for him. I'm not here to, to prove my love for, uh, for anything else, but I'm here to prove my love for him. He's the only thing that matters in my life. Uh, no matter what we go through, the Lord is still the only thing that matters in my life. And I, as Sister Kathy was talking about storms, it made me think of several scriptures. And I wrote down three things as she was talking. Uh, there will never be a storm that is outside of the Lord's control. So no matter how big that storm is, there's never going to be one that's outside of his control. He has control of every situation that we go in. Uh, there will never be a storm that will last forever. Uh, so no matter whatever storm you're in, there will be an end point at some point. At, and, that, and that just in the natural storm, they stop uh, just like a storm in your own life. At some point, they will stop. And, uh, and our storms can and should strengthen our faith in the Lord. And if they don't strengthen your faith in the Lord, if they draw you away from the Lord or for some reason you're not getting that strength in the Lord, there, there's something wrong. Uh, those times that we're going through those storms are the times that we should be clinging on the Lord even more, uh, that we should be running to him. We should be always running to him, but especially those times that we uh, are going through those storms, whether they're self-inflicted storms or they're just random storms or whatever the storm is, we should be running to the Lord. He has full control um, of everything. And I had told this, this, uh, this quote to somebody else earlier this week, but it's been stuck in my head all week long that life isn't about waiting for the storm uh, to pass. It's about learning how to rain. It's le learning how to dance during the storm, learning how to get through the storm while you're in it, uh, to, to not just, Lord, let it be over. Lord, let it be over. You know, sometimes we go through storms. The Lord wants us to be in those storms. If he just quickly take us out, uh, we'd never learn anything. We'd never grow. Just like a child, if you give your child anything and everything, uh, they'll, they'll never, they'll never appreciate it. They'll never, uh, They'll just expect it, and I don't want that to, come, to be the same way for the Lord, that he just does it for me, and I expect it. I do expect the Lord to be there for me, but I do not expect him to just stop every situation that I'm in just like that, because I want it to stop. And sometimes we have to go through these things. Sometimes we, we need to go through these things. There's some times in my life, storms I've gone through, where the Lord had to humble me down, uh, way down, before I could get back up again. Uh, and sometimes we have to be humbled down, whether we like to be humbled down or not. But the Lord knows. The Lord's in control. Uh, we sing that song, he's still in control. Uh, um, and uh, Brother Todd, he would always say, God's got this. Uh, I, I'll never forget that. That those just few little words, God's got this, means, means everything. Uh, the moment that we think we have this is the moment that we think we're going, the moment that we will fail. Uh, we cannot have this. We cannot take this in our hands. We've got to let God have control of everything. Uh, during that song, Amber wrote that, that you have a heart that's pure, uh, there's a line in it, to move at his command. Uh, it's easy to want to move at your own, your own will, your own way, especially when you're going through something. You want to change something. You want to react. You want to do something. But to wait at his command, sometimes the hardest thing is, is just to wait and, and see what the Lord has in store for, for just in general during that storm or in general in your life. Sometimes we have to wait. I think Amber mentioned that the other day, that sometimes he'll say yes, sometimes he'll say no, and sometimes he'll say just wait. And, and sometimes we have to wait, no matter how hard the, 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 the waves are brewing, the, the storms are raging. Sometimes we have to, ra uh, to wait. And they're, they're in Mark. This is in several of the, 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 several of the Gospels. They're in, but I like this one the best. Mark 4. And we all know this story. Um, they're, all on the, they're all on the boat with Jesus. And the, the storm starts. Where is that at? It's like 4 and 36, 37. I'll just start at 36. And when they had sent away the multitude, they took, they took him as he was in the ship, and there were also with him other little ships. 
And there arose a great storm of wind, and when the waves beat into, sh into the ship, uh, so now that it was full. And he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow. And they awake him, saying, and say unto him, Master, uh, carest not that we are going to perish? You know, the, the Lord was just asleep on a, on a little pillow, had no, had, no, had no care in the world that something bad would have happened. But everything, every, all these other ones around him, they thought they were going to die just because there was a little storm, don't they? Uh, they should have known they, they had the greatest captain of all captains on the boat with them, the greatest man that ever walked the earth on the boat with them. Uh, it's so easy uh, to, to just forget that what the Lord has done for us and forget uh, that he's right there with us. He's never, like I said the other day, he'll never leave us, he'll never forsake us, but he's right there on the boat with them, uh, with them and he is on the boat with us. And then uh, was it 39, and he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, peace, be still. Three simple little words, peace, be still. Uh, and that whole storm, the wind ceased and there was a great calm. Uh, we know the great maker of the rain, the, the master of the wind. Uh, but yet sometimes we still forget that we know that. Uh, you know, Adam and Eve had, we have, we have everything as, ch as children we got. We, we, have, we know the Prince of Peace. We have that joy. We have that wisdom. We have that understanding. We have everything when we have the Lord. We don't need anything outside of the Lord. He provides everything. You know, Adam and Eve have all that themselves too, but yet they wanted more. Uh, that was their, their downfall. They, they wanted more. They, they, the Lord said, you can have all this, but yet they wanted more. They wanted, the carnality is to always want more, want something that you don't have, to want more of you what you don't have, uh, to just want more of what you do have. They wanted more, and we all, they, the, the sin of disbelief, the sin of disobedience, and they fell. And here we are today, we still fall into that same trap. We still, fall, not that it was a trap, we still fall into that same situation where we want more. Uh, we have everything that we could possibly have. We have the Lord on our side, but yet we still want more. And we forget that we have the Lord on our side. We forget that he can calm the storms. He can uh, calm the wind. He can bring peace to our lives if we're willing to wait it out. Uh, it made me think of, it was a Peter walking on the water. It wasn't the storm. When he walked on the water, it wasn't necessarily the storm that made him sink. It was his uh, uh, lack of focus on the Lord that made him sink. It was his lack of, uh, that's all it was. He could have he walked across the ocean or walked across the sea uh, with that storm a raging if he would have had his uh, faith on the Lord, had his trust in the Lord, but he lost that faith. He lost that focus that he had. And we can lose our focus. We can lose our, our faith if we let the things around us take over. And we can, we can miss out on something uh, marvelous. We can miss out on something amazing uh, by getting uh, our control on something. That, we, that God doesn't have this anymore. I have this now. But Lord, help us to, to keep, on, keep on the ship and know who our captain is. The Lord is, he's that great captain. He is my, what is that, the, what is that song that we're saying? He's the, something about the host. Um, uh, I'm gonna, I don't know what it is at the moment, but we sing a song about him being the Lord, Lord of hosts or great host or um, Amber knows what I'm talking about, but he is that great. He is that great captain, the host of hosts or whatever it says, but he is that, that great captain that we can, that we can count on to always be there, to always want to be. He wants to be there for you, but do you want him to be there for you? That's the question that um, he is our strength. Where is that? Yeah, he is the captain of our host. I knew there was something in there. But he is that great captain. He is our strength. If we're willing to let him be, uh, I, I, it, it makes me wonder, it baffles me that so many people, especially the ones that know the Lord, don't want to, to let him be their captain. They want to be the captain. They want to be in control the whole time, knowing, knowing what they know and how they've been raised up. And they just want to do what they want to do. But the Lord is our great captain. He is our great, uh, he's our great friend in a time of need if we just let him. And, there's some other scriptures and psalms that had come to mind during the service, um, similar to when about these storms. And uh, we're all going to go through storms. It's just how we deal with them when we go through them. Uh, psalms 89 and 8. Uh, Our Lord, the God of hosts, who is strong, who is a strong Lord unto thee, or thy uh, faithfulness around thee. Uh, thou rulest the raging sea when the waves uh, thereof rise. Thou stillest them. Uh, he is, when the storms are raging, when the, the storms are brewing, the Lord will, will calm that sea. Um, but it's up to you to let him. It's up to you to run to him. It's up to you to go to him 
and, and when you go to him, to leave it to him, to give it, to lay it all down, to give him your burdens and, and not just pick him up. When things don't go your way, I'm going to just pick him up again and, and try to take control. But to, once you give it to the Lord, let him have it and keep it there and let the Lord do his work. All we have to do is let the door, Lord do his work and he will do it. Uh, he's not going to leave us or forsake us. There in Psalms 107. Uh, I'll just start at 20, 25, 107 and 25. For he commandeth and raises the stormy wind, uh, which lifted up the waves thereof. They mount up in heaven. They go down again in the depths. Uh, their soul is melted because of trouble. Uh, they reel to and fro. They stagger like a drunken man, and they're at their wit's end. Then they cry unto the Lord in their trouble, and he bringeth them out of their distress. He maketh the storm calm, so that the waves thereof are still. Uh, but they had the cry that said, then they cry out unto the Lord into their trouble. They cry out unto the Lord. They knew they had to cry out to the Lord. They knew that they couldn't do it on their own. And all we have to do is cr simply cry out to the Lord. Uh, it isn't something that we have to beg him. I've heard many, we should never beg the Lord to do anything. When we pray, we should pray for his will. Uh, I want whatever the, the Lord's will in my life, that's what I want. I don't want to pray for, when I pray for a situation. I don't pray, Lord, let, do this, do this, do this, do this. This is all I want, Lord, just do this. But I pray, Lord, your will be done. It may not be the will that I want. It may not be the answer that I want, but it's the best answer that will be possibly for my life uh, that, will, that will help me no matter what. Um, but Lord, I want your will in my life. I'm here in Sykeston because I obeyed the Lord and he, this was his will for my life to, uh, to, to come here in Sykeston in the, in the middle of nowhere to come to Sykeston, Missouri and Lord, I, I've been faithful. I'm still here, and I will continue to be here. This is where the Lord's placed me. And if you're here, this is where the Lord's placed you. As Sister Kathy, the Lord was drawn her to Springfield, but thank the Lord he drew you back here to Sykeston. Um, we need everybody here. Uh, I need everybody here. Uh, Brother Bobby needs everybody here. Everybody here, we need each other. We are a family. Uh, and there are going to be hard times, but we cry out to the Lord, and we obey his will we obey his command we do what he wants us to do be who he wants us to be serve the way serve the way serve him the way he wants to be served and things will be the way they're supposed to be like i said it won't always be gumdrops and rainbows and uh, i use that all the time it's funny how other people have started using that where i go to different churches and i've heard it in cape um but it's it's true i try when i talk i try to make things in a way that people can understand a, an easy way that they can they can picture something in their mind that uh, it's not too big, it's not way over their head, it's not way too low, but it's where everybody can understand. That's what I, that's what I try when I make up some of these little things I say. I want it to where people can understand. Things aren't always going to be perfect in life. Things aren't always going to be bad either. Uh, but there, are, there will be times when things are really good, and there will be times when things are really bad. But there's also times when things are just just, just right. Um, and there's, it's just the way it is. It's, it's part of life, whether you're a Christian or you're not a Christian. Um, we just get the benefits of being a Christian. We get all that the Lord on our side where the world doesn't. But Lord, help us to be who you want us to be, um, regardless of the situation. I don't serve the Lord because I want life to be gumdrops and rainbows and all that. I serve the Lord because I love the Lord, regardless of what comes my way, regardless of my storms that come my way, regardless of my circumstances. I still love the Lord. That will never change in my life. Uh, no matter what comes at me, that will never change. The Lord will always be my, my number one. It's taken, as I said the other day, it's taken many years to get to that point, but I'm at that point where the Lord will be my, my everything. He is my everything. So I hope he's your everything. And if he's not, then I, I pray that the Lord will help you get to that point where he is your everything, that you live to serve the Lord. You don't live to, to work. You don't live to, to do this. You don't live to do that, but you live to serve the Lord uh, as he's called us to. We, we are here to be servants unto him. And, and Lord, I, I take that seriously. Lord, that's what I want to be, a servant unto you. Um, and then in, in Isaiah 40, 41, 41 and 10. Uh, fear not, fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee. I will, help the, I will uphold thee with thy right hand of righteousness. See, and these are just scriptures that they're all just to show that the Lord is with you, that, that he will help you, that he will be in control if you, if you let him be. Uh, 
I'm not speaking any great doctrine or anything like that. I'm just trying to encourage and try to, to show you that there is a God that cares. You may not think there is a God that cares. You may not know there's a God that cares. You may want, want to know, but I'm telling you there is a God that cares, a God that will hold you and uphold you in the right hand of his righteousness. He will take care of you. He will strengthen you. He will give you the peace. He will give you the joy. He will give you the comfort uh, that, he, that you need. But sometimes it takes time. And that's the hardest part about living is, is going, waiting and taking that time uh, to get there. Let's see. There, and then in 2 Corinthians uh, 4. I'll just start with 7. 4 and 7 in 2 Corinthians. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the, the, excellency of the power of uh, may be of God and not of us, but we are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. We are persecuted, but we have not been forsaken. We are cast down, uh, but we are not destroyed. Uh, so, and they, these are ones that have the Lord in their lives. These aren't just random people talking, but these are the ones that know the Lord and are living a life for Him. Uh, with Him, you can be troubled and all, but and not have any distress in your life. You can be perplexed and not be in despair. You can be persecuted and not forsaken, and you can be cast down, um, but not destroyed. Um, you, but you have to have the Lord in your life, and you have to let him lead you in that life to get to that point. Uh, that it, It's not just some, every not everybody's going to have this. Not everybody is going to get that benefit uh, without serving the Lord. The world is not going to have that uh, until they turn their eyes upon Jesus, as we sing that song, turn your eyes upon Jesus. There's, there's no other direction my eyes want to be than on him. Uh, and we have to get to that point. And then I had one other scripture there in Philippians three and or Philippians four. I'm sorry, uh, four and four. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Let your uh, moderation be known to all men. Let your Lord, that the Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing, but in everything, uh, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your request be known, be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds. Uh, through Jesus Christ, or through Christ Jesus, because He is everything. He is He is our He's our only hope. If you have hope in anything else in this world, you're going to you're going to fall, uh, and you're going to keep falling, and you're going to stay down. But when we have the Lord by ourselves, we can get on our side. We can get back up. Uh, and not only do we have to get up back on our own, He will help us get up. And uh, and, and His His brothers and sisters will help you get back up too. We're here to help pick up our brothers and our sisters. We're not here alone. Uh, we may feel all alone at some time, but we are not alone. Uh, a church is for his people to be gathered. Uh, it'd be a horrible place if everybody was here and it's just uh, one man for themselves. Uh, what is that saying? That one man, I don't know, um, one man band. I'm trying to think of another thing, but yeah, but it's, this isn't a one person show or a one man band, but this is everybody uh, putting together to play their, their beautiful instruments together. As Sister Kathy said a couple weeks ago, everybody has their own part. And when all those parts are working correctly, you have a musical, a beautiful instrument being played, a beautiful song being played. Um, but if someone's not working right, or somebody's not where they should be, that they could, you'll hear a, an off tune or a, a bad note or something. And let the Lord help us all come back together. We're here to pick these up. We're here to get us all in tune. Uh, the ministry is here to help us hear what the Lord is saying and to uh, to, to fine tune us. As I that 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 poem that I've uh, read about the. Uh, the the master and the, the violin, that, that violin was all out of whack. It was all out of tune. But until the master tuned it back up and put it back together, that's when it got its values. When that master gets a hold of us, that let the master get a hold of you. Let the master change your life. Um, you don't have to change it yourself. You do have to do some work on your own. You can't just say, God, here I am. Change me. And you know, there's a work that has to be done in all of our lives. He'll give us the pieces. He'll give us the tools. He'll give us the strength. Uh, but at some point, we have to take those tools, we have to take that strength and move forward in the direction that he's put us in and to keep building and to keep growing and to keep changing. Lord, I want to change. I've been here for 15, 16 years and I'm still growing. I'm still changing. I'm so thankful I'm not the man I was when I first walked through these doors 15, 16 years ago. I'm thankful that I'm not the man I was a year ago or six months from now or yesterday, that I, I've grown just a little bit more every day. I've learned just a little bit more every day. And that's because I'm putting the Lord first. Uh, we should all be wanting to put the Lord first. We have to put the Lord first. I put so much emphasis on that, to serve the Lord the way he wants us to be served, because we'll never make heaven our home if we don't. We'll never make heaven our home. And I think we're all here 
because we want to make heaven our home. We want to see Jesus face to face. We want to tell him thank you. We want to tell him I love you. Uh, thank you for everything you've done for me. Every, every, every storm you've kept me from, every storm that you've brought me through, um, everything that he's kept us, we want to tell him thank you. We want to embrace him. But the only way to do that is to live the way he wants us to be uh, living. And Lord, help us to get there. It's not something that we can do in a matter of five days or 10 days or, or two years or 15 years. It takes a lifetime to get to that point. It takes a lifetime. That's why they're, you see these old ones, Sister, Sister Mauser, I would guarantee you if she, if she was here today, she'd tell you she's still growing herself. As nine, it was at 92 years old, 91, 92 years old. She's still growing. She's still letting the Lord change her. And there's a, a changing in our lives that have to take place until we become perfect. And sometimes it's sooner than others, and sometimes it, maybe we'll never get there on this side. But if we don't get there on this side, we have the hope that we can become perfect on the next side. You still have to finish your race. And many people think that once you die, that you automatically get a resurrection for knowing the Lord. <clears throat> but we know that's not true. There's many people that will probably get a resurrection for knowing the Lord to the extent that they know him but they'll still have to finish the race. They'll still have to receive the Holy Ghost if they haven't. They still have to be saved. They still have to, they're probably all saved, but they probably don't have the Holy Ghost and they, and they don't, for sure, they're not perfect, but they'll have to get there and hopefully they'll get the chance to, to make it and see the church calling. They'll see the church. There'll still be a church to, to go to and hopefully they'll hear that message and there'll be all churches all over the place. They'll have to find the right one, but hopefully they'll find the right one. The Lord will lead them in the right direction and they'll listen to his voice. It'd still be up to them uh, to find that church, to hear that call, to hear the, the Lord calling to them and to hear that beautiful word that we hear that I don't ever want to take for granted. We hear such beautiful things here. We know such amazing things that this world knows nothing about. Uh, the love that we know that the Lord is, is love. They don't even know how much love the Lord has. By the way they teach, the, some of the doctrines they have, they don't teach the same Jesus that we teach. Um, but Lord, I'm thank you for the t Jesus that we teach and thankful for the service that we have and uh, I don't want to close the service yet, but if, if Amber has a song, and we can have a song and see if anybody else has any, any testimonies. But I'm just thankful for everybody here. And uh, take hold of what the Lord is doing for your life. Uh, even if it's going rough, point, go to the Lord and he will help you. And stay focused on the Lord. Don't focus on anything else. Don't, fake, don't focus on your storm. Don't work, focus on your, your work. Focus on the Lord. And he will take care of the storm. He would take care of you. whatever situation you're in. If you focus on on him, nothing else matters. He will be the, the calmer of the storm, but you have to put him first and put your focus in him.